Okay, where we left off in the OSPF process is we have OSPF running on R3 and R2, and since R2 is configured first, even that has the lower, even though it has the lower IP address 192.168.50.2 versus 192.168.50.3 on R3, R2 became the DR, and that makes R3 the BDR. So the election process ended up going the winner going to the router that was configured first. So what I want to do now is I want to configure OSPF on R0 and then R1 and then we can play around with the election process by setting router IDs, loopback interfaces, router priority numbers, and then restarting the processes or turning interfaces on and off to uh, force a election process. But let's go to R0 first and set up OSPF. So I have con password configured on R0, so the password is Cisco, and then the enable password is class. Okay, and now we can get to global config mode and type in router OSPF1, and then give it the networks that we're going to work with. And since this is router 0, it's the 0.0, .0 network, 192.168.0.0, the wildcard bits, and area 0. Whoops, area 0. Okay, and then I'll just do an up arrow and add the 50 network. Okay, I'm also going to do a passive interface for the interface going out to the local area network. Alright, that was that command right there. Passive interface FA0 slash 1. Notice we got messages that we had two adjacent adjacencies added, OSPF neighbor relationships established as soon as um, packets were exchanged, hello packets were exchanged, um, we were able to see those, right? And, um, okay, perfect. Okay, so we have that done. And we'll just do it with this last router, R1, also. Now with R1, I don't have passwords configured, so we can go right in, get to global config mode, type in our router OSPF command 1, right, and our networks, network, Oops, incomplete command, I forgot the area zero. Okay, and this is R1, so R1 has the one network also. Okay, now I've put in network 50 and network 1, 192.168.50, which goes right here, the 50. Here's the one but I'm not going to have this 200 network participate in OSPF because it's pointed to the ISP and the ISP router here is not participating in OSPF so we're not going to send OSPF this way so I don't put in the network command for that network also I can even put in a passive interface command for that so passive tab interface FA0 slash 1 and I don't have to put in a passive interface command for the serial interface because I didn't add it as a network, right? I didn't add the 200 network, so it's not sending OSPF packets out of that interface anyway. But what I do have is a default route going this way, right? I, R1 has a default route going this way, and these routers do not know about that default route. So let's see if we can distribute that default route using OSPF. So I'm, once again I'm in router OSPF1. I want to put in a question mark and you can see there's the default dash information command. So I'll type DEF tab default information then a question mark and then the rest of the command is originate. So default dash information originate will distribute that default route to the other OSPF routers in the area. Uh, neighboring OSPF routers. Okay. Notice in here when I did the question mark we've got the um, 
we have also a uh, router ID command here where we can set the router ID for the um, OSPF process and, and basically manually configure the router ID for the router. Now what is the router ID on this router? Alright, we'll just go here and we'll do show IP protocols and you can see that if we do a show IP protocols command, whoops, that the um, router ID is the highest IP address on the router. So for router 1, even though router 1 is not using this interface in the OSPF process, right, this 200.10.10.253 IP address is the highest interface address on the router and so it became the router ID for um, this router, R1. Well, that makes it the highest router ID in the network because no other router has a 200 address. So if we wanted R0 to be the DR, well, right now, R1 should be the DR if the election process happens simultaneously. Um, R1 has the highest interface ID right has the highest router ID so it should be the winner so let's see what router one knows about what we'll do is we'll go in here and we'll say show IP OSPF neighbors right or show ISPF neighbor alright that's the command and you can see that it sees three OSPF routers that are neighboring routers you can see that 50.3 is the BDR, and that is right here. 50.3 is the um, is the BDR. The DR is now 50.10, right? So somehow 50.10 became the DR, and then 50.2 is the um, is a DR other, right? Now, full neighbor adjacency, full neighbor adjacency, right? And then with 50.2, it says two-way, which is also a neighbor adjacency in a multi-access network. Now, this number right here, notice these ones, these are the router priority numbers. Now, remember, the router priority number is the number one way to set, you know, who's going to be the DR. And you can see that the default number is number one, the router priority number for all of these um, routers. So we could manually set that and then influence the DR election. Now right now 50.10 being the DR this is who we want to be the DR. But if we were to let's say go into R0 here the owner of the 50.10 network and let's just do a little something here. We'll go into conf t, right? interface FA0 slash 0 and then do a shutdown command and that just shut down the fast Ethernet interface on 0 and it just lost three adjacencies for that router. Now we'll just bring it back up by doing a no shutdown command right and now the interface is back up. So now our 0 right and this is R0 is this router right here, is now going to participate. Notice the orange light here, so the interface is coming back up. It will now participate in the relationships again, right? And we'll see who's the DR now. I'm going to test it with R2 here. So I'll open up R2 and just type in a show IP OS PF neighbor command and we can see that there's no DR yet, right? Or that this router is the DR, right? You can see um, 50.10 exchanging start full, right? Neighbor process happening. And let's see here. I'm going to test it with R1 also. R1 sees 50.2 as the DR and 50.3 as the BDR and 50.10 as the DR other, right? So 
the process is going a little funky. Um, the, if we were to take down the DR here, let's say on 50.2, 50.3 should become the DR because it's next in line. So if DR goes down, the BDR is supposed to take its place. And I'm not sure if that happened exactly from before. Um, let's see if it happens this time. So on 50.2, we'll go here. I'm just going to very easily go here and take down the interface like that. And then I will put it back up, right? And now let's see who becomes the um, DR. We'll test it from R0. So I'm, I'm clicked on R0 here. And, and we'll do a command to test it. Show IP OSPF neighbor. All right. And now 50.3 has in fact become the DR because it was the BDR. And now the BDR is the person who's next in line. And the person next in line actually was the 200 router with the 200 address and it became the BDR. So it's safe to say that the router, highest router ID is winning because the 200 address became the BDR, right? And of course the DR became whoever was next in line. So if this interface was to go down on this router, then the router with the highest IP address eventually becomes the DR based on interfaces going up and down and situations like that. Now, we need to manually configure who's going to be the DR and make sure that that's in place so that our router with the most processing power, the most RAM, the newest router, the most robust router is the one that is the DR, so it's the one that has the job of handing out link, step, link state packets on the network. So we eventually want it to be this router right here. We, we need to influence that process.